Hey everyone, Greg here. As you may know by now, I'm the co-founder and CEO of TripShock, an online reseller for water sports and tours. For the past 12 years, we've had the pleasure of working with hundreds of operators across the country, and we're looking to grow our community. It's free to sign up, and you only pay when we bring you confirmed bookings. We'll help you reach new customers, fill empty seats, and grow your business like so many have done with us over the years. Head over to partners.tripshock.com to learn more about our program, read testimonials, or speak directly with our supply team. As always, thank you for listening and enjoy the show. Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in for our first ever Kevin's Corner. In this short segment, we talk about what Kevin and I learned this week, and also make a few announcements regarding the podcast and any industry news. So, announcements. Arrival is not doing their in-person event in November. And if you're not familiar with Arrival, Arrival is somewhat of our industry trade show or conference, I guess you could say, we go to every year. TripShock, anyway, goes to every year. Kevin went last year for the first time. I think we can both admit that it was a really awesome experience. But with COVID, I doubt conferences will be a thing for at least another year. So they moved Arrival to virtual That is going to happen on October 26th, and it's called Arrival 360. There's going to be lots of presentations, great data about what's going on in the industry, best practices. Hey, uh, who's there? uh, I'm sorry. I just want to jump in here Yeah, uh, because I've been taking a break from social media, which was uh, my connection to Arrival. Do they have any like really cool keynote speakers or any anybody that you're particularly interested in seeing? Well, I believe I saw that the president of Viator is going to be speaking, but I'll have to double check. Um, oh, I typically... might, I might, I might jump on for that. I'm gonna get in on the Q and A. I know he he recently did a webinar with with Douglas Quimby, so I'm I'm curious, but I think I saw that on on a uh, on a post just recently that he's gonna be involved in that. So I did a like a mini virtual conference a few months ago, and we did a water sports roundtable, and it was really great. We had. 10, 10 people in the round table it was small. And I, it was great to see all the, these water sport operators across the, the world really talking about what's going on with the pandemic and, and what are all doing differently. So highly recommend being a part of that. It's $99 for operators. And also, if you're an operator that's having a really rough year, there's an opportunity to get that fee waived for hardship. But you can get all the details at arrival.travel. I definitely will be there so you can hit me up. I'll and, be there. Uh, yeah, Kevin, I'll Kevin, there. Kevin's definitely going to be there. So you will get to network with both of us if you attend. Highly recommend. Our webinar from last month that we did with Amber Merrill from Power Up Water Sports and Douglas Quimby is now live on Arrival's website. Uh, I'll provide a link in the show notes so you can check that out if you missed it. Next, we have just an announcement that if you haven't reviewed the show, definitely do that on your favorite podcast app. It helps new subscribers and gets more people into the Aqua Water Sports club. I definitely Absolutely. Do that. Which membership includes some really great benefits such as uh, friendship. <laughs> 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 it's it's an it's an uh, it's an unmeasurable equity. So let's let's jump into Kevin's corner. So Kevin's corner, as we announced last week, was what we what we learn uh, every week because we learn about all these cool things. And I just thought Kevin's corner sounded really funny. So that's what we just went with. I want to I want to re I want to you know I'm all about rebranding. Man. <laughs> so I, I, I I like want to rebrand. I want to get us like Destiny Water Adventure the new logo. And I like to just change things. Like I get bored real easy. So we're gonna come up with another you know k sounding thing that's like kevin's kevin's caliphate (laughs) (laughs) no i'm just kidding i don't know (laughs) is that overstepping the bounds oh Oh, okay yeah Yeah. kevin's kevin's i always like imagine like me sitting in a corner (laughs) like where i spent most of my youth kevin get in the corner all right yeah kevin's corner so um this is the what we learned segment right but we're just calling it kevin's corner okay kevin's corner Kevin's Corner. And, you know, I like it because I like that I'm getting like tasked with that because I like I like to teach, man. And, and I'm pretty sure that's that some people are, are talking about. It. I'm sure it's 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 trending on, on Netflix. So to be topical, social dilemma. And it kind of ties in with with our topic today. Social dilemma about a relationship with social media and the sort of overarching themes that it plays to in our in our everyday lives. It's It's kind of stuff that you intuitively know but i just find it found it incredibly like, illuminating kind of like putting it all together and reinforcing these ideas that social media has sort of become 
own, you know, an echo chamber. And for people that that don't know, a lot of the stuff I already knew just from doing marketing on social media. You know, I under, I understand how engagement works, and the more you like something or click on something, the more of it you see, whether it be ads or whether it be people on your friends list that you engage with. Like I remember telling my my brother at some point because he loved to go and he would get into these like political jousts on you know uh, the the opposing sides the, the the pundit or commentator what have you so he, he would jump on say somebody like say uh, governor of michigan gretchen whitmer and then you know he would get on her page and then fight with the people and then it would just constantly there would be more left-leaning liberal democratic stuff popping up in his news feed and i and i said tim that's happening because you're getting in on you know public forums and commenting so that's telling the facebook algorithm that you know that, that this is something that interests you this is something that you want to see it's not you know some conspiracy propagated by facebook or mark zuckerberg it's because you're engaging with it and so they jump in there and they 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 talk uh quite a bit about that but even how you know facebook in particular uh is now becoming more predictive the more that you engage uh, the algorithm can sort of predict your behavior now so that feeling that when you talk about something or you think about something and you know it pops up in your feed you know it's like you feel like they're reading your mind well it sort of they, they sort of are because they're collecting all this this data on you. So so, so what are so, so, what are so yeah what did I learn? Yeah, yeah. I or what are you doing about it? Because you yeah in you practice some, yeah 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 no in practice yeah sorry I I, I went over that the, <laughs> <laughs> the thesis yeah so what I gain I did gain from it at the end was that you know less than let it. Uh, less than just like putting away your phone, but like turning off your notifications uh, was, is is a big one. And so I shut off my email notifications because I realized how much stress it was causing in my life. Every every booking, every review, every anecdotal thing from a marketer or whatever, I kept on. You know, I have five different email accounts. Use them for for different uh, facets of my personal and business life. And so I was just basically under attack all day long just from my from my emails from from everything so i started shutting off my notifications a, a lot of my notifications and even while i was on vacation i actually shut off my text message notifications and for probably the first time in a solid 10 years i did not have my phone with me at, at one point my wife was like well i'll just call you and I was like, well, my phone's back at the house. She was like, what? And I was like, yeah, I, I left my phone at the house. <laughs> and she was just like shocked because I do everything from my phone. It's like, because I'm always on the road and I'm always doing so much. I do I answer all my emails. I do yeah, all you, my Google you my had business to do that. stuff. I, I commend you for that. And I, I watched that show too on Netflix and I, I'm right there with you. I, if I if I said I didn't do anything after watching, I would be lying to you because I actually did when when in my phone and I turned off just some social media apps that I have. I just turned off the notifications and just only basically only the important stuff. I even turned on the bedtime feature. So after a certain time, it blocks any notification from hitting my phone. So yep. I, that way it get, make, gives me some peace of mind at nine, 10 o'clock that if some notification comes in, it's, it's the phone's going to stop it. So yeah, that's, that was really great. And that's, that's a great, what I learned this week. The thing that I learned this week is that a 401k in retirement plans are not as expensive as I, as I thought. And in fact, we're going to start doing those for both Wave Res and Trip Shock, And it only costs with 20 employees that will probably opt in 270 bucks a month for the employer. You can start doing 401k and retirement plans for your team members for very inexpensive. And, and really the, the cost of these plans are very inexpensive just because technology has lowered the, the human requirement to, to manage these portfolios. So if you don't really know much about 401k and retirement, I personally didn't know much either. A lot of employees asked about it to the point where I had to research and figure it out. It's just an account that you set up where em employees can put money uh, pre-tax into an account that can accrue interest or appreciation from investing in portfolios and stocks and stuff. You don't got to know much more than that. If you wanted to know more, go and research it. But it's a great way to bring in high talent or retain your employees by offering these these benefits. But awesome. I'm 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 just I'm not going to tell the company that I'm going with until I've had time to get comfortable with them and get it set up. But once we do, I will share my experience in case you ever decide to uh, offer these plans. You don't have to be a big company to offer a 401k plan or retirement plan. In fact, this company that I'm that we're going to go with, the average 
the size of the company is around 15, 20 full-time employees. Not to say I don't, I don't really see a lot of water sport companies promoting retirement, insurance, 401k plans. It's just a very seasonal business. And plus, a lot of the employees are younger, which they don't necessarily start that early. But still, it's something I, I didn't think that was so inexpensive and easy. Can, to can, I, can I ask you a question real quick? Yeah. About that. So from your, from the employer, so I, I had a 401k upon a time. And so you mentioned that the management fees were like really inexpensive, like 270 bucks or something like that, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so, and now does that, is that like on a sliding scale, depending on how much uh, the employee matches versus or puts into it versus what you put into it? That's, no, that's all different. That's, we're just talking just to have the plan itself, just to have the the management of it. So, so, the, so for like a company that with five employees, it might it might cost anywhere between 100 and 150 a month for just the software and the management of it. Now there is costs from the employees that for just having an account open. So, for example, the employee would pay 0.5 percent of their portfolio per year as like a a management fee from the fund that they invest in. So if you have do, they, grand, do they recommend a certain amount that each employee should put in from like their weekly paycheck? Correct. Yep. They advise you on all that. And so the company, now we talk about matching. So let's say that the company has a good year. They're going to match that employee up to $5,000. So you can basically match dollar for dollar up to $5,000. For the year. For the year. And that's that's pre-tax money for both the employer and the employee that they put in. So it go and it goes in that form. 401k plan. So you can even do it for your team and, and use even if you just want to do it for your own retirement. And also it reduces your taxable income for your company. Yeah, if you're making a hundred thousand in profit, you're gonna either spend that money on new equipment or you can put that money into re- your retirement. And then I have another question for you. Uh, with the 401k, do they give you different is there is is there is there different portfolios that you can choose from that w- that it would go into is it like yep, yep. so you, so if you want to if you, and and is it specified to what that company offers so do different 401k Correct. management okay so there's different companies that work with different portfolios that you could so, choose from like like Vanguard or Correct so like Vanguard that. is like the staple so there's right. approximately 20 different portfolios with with this particular company that we're going with there's 20 different portfolios that you can choose from so when your employee is onboarding for their 401k they will ask the employee well, how risky they want to be right. with their portfolios being that i i personally have assets a home a family i'm not going to be super risky but i am young i might be a little risky cuz i got if the market crashes i have time for it to recover but if i'm 55 years old I'm probably going to be more conservative and stick with more bonds and more lower interest type stuff because I don't want to lose all my money if the market crashes again. So they will set that portfolio and plus they will advise you every so often if you have to switch your portfolio you know, hmm. to something based on your age and your current assets and whatnot. So it's it's pretty cool. So you, I mean, Kevin, you might even want to look into it because it's a way to put some money away pre-tax that you might have to, instead of buying all new equipment, maybe you can put some money away for retirement just as one way to shelter and defer that tax. Well, I've been, re- I've been, I won't get too in depth <laughs> into it uh, because it, I, it's, it's a super, it's like a really foreign concept to me as far as investments go, but, but I've been reading about this concept called uh, infinite banking and like buying whole life insurance policies as a, yeah. as a form of retirement because they, there's like some, a lot of tax benefits to whole life when you know, purchase an entire, you know, you invest it as part of your par- portfolio. Uh, it's not like you want to bet the whole farm on it every year, but there's a, a, an incredible amount of tax benefits as life insurance laws actually predate uh, tax laws, believe it or not. Yeah. So, but it's, it's incredibly complicated <laughs> and I, I've, I've been reading a book on it and and it's and, it, and i'm just like my head's going in circles you've been listening to the awkward water sport guys podcast if you're in the water sport industry this is the podcast that brings the business perspective to parasailing jet and ski boat rentals sailing snorkeling and everything else We hope you've gotten some useful and practical information from this show. Be sure to sign up to our email list at watersportpodcast.com and subscribe in your favorite podcast app. We'll see you next time, and thanks for listening.